We're here in Forbes, four and a half hours drive west of Sydney to meet one of Australia's greatest ever kangaroos. Let's go meet Ian Walsh, a man who played a lot of his football out here in the Western Districts for Forbes, for Condobolin, and uh, also played plenty of years with the Great St George team. G'day, How Ian. Do you do? How are you going? How are you, mate? Oh, not bad. You have a safe trip here. Yeah, beautiful, thanks. That's the main thing. Welcome to Forbes. Thank you very much. You want to take a seat? Oh, yes. Better than standing, <laughs> especially when you get to my age. <laughs> mate, I can't wait to ask you uh, all about those great glory days with the, with the Dragons. Uh, I'll never be repeated, unfortunately. Uh, they were wonderful, wonderful years with the Dragons. They're a wonderful club and uh, they were wonderful players. I played with the cream of the cream. So where did the journey start for Ian Walsh? I was still going to school. Uh, when I was playing for Bogan Gate, and we used to travel to the games, which was against Trundle, Tottenham, Firefield, out that way. Mm -hmm. And we used to travel in a nailed army truck. We'd be all sitting in the back, and it was a great education, I can tell you, <laughs> to rugby league. And that's why I kicked off my first couple of years. As I said, I was still going to school. I toured England in 1959 and I got to know Reg Gaznia, Johnny Raper and Billy Wilson and uh, that's what sort of tipped me towards St George and plus the fact the officials of St George, Frank Facer and Glenn Price and Len Kelly and a few, they were terrific and to me coming from the country going down there whether I was just a visitor or not uh, they seemed to put in that extra bit and that is why I picked St George. Uh, it wouldn't have been money wise because uh, I didn't care about money. All I wanted to do was play on the Sydney Cricket Ground. That is the only thing I wanted to do in life, is play on the Sydney Cricket Ground. I used to bite and then I bit the Frenchman that day. He put his fingers in my mouth and all around the world know not to put their fingers in Ian Walker's mouth. <laughs> Of course, I bit an Englishman and they kicked up a fuss, the Pommies and Kiwis kicked up a fuss, Frenchmen kicked up a fuss, but if they put their fingers near my mouth and my eyes, I'd bite. But Ian, was that time you were also not just a player with the Dragons, you became their captain coach too. And that's what happened when Norm Proven retired. Um, I didn't have any thoughts on captain coach of St George. Uh, anyway, St George, Facer came to me and he said, we want you to be captain coach next year. I said, oh yeah, what about that? Said, no, we want you, we've selected you. So that's what happened, I was captain coach and we went on, we won in uh, 66, we won the grand final and uh, in 1967, of course, we got beat by a point by Canterbury. And when I went on to captain Australia and to lead Australia onto the Sydney Cricket Ground and we had had a win, it was wonderful. Yeah. And the same with St George. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for having me here at uh, your home and taking us back through your journey and it's been a real pleasure to sit with a legend and, and go back over old times. Well, it's been a pleasure, I'm glad for you to be here. Uh, I was out at Bowden Gate just recently. I had a look at the old shed and the old ground. Uh, I thought it's a long way from there to Wembley Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Brad.